Good afternoon and welcome to Winnell Sport. I'm George Busby. Coming up, the Winchester Knights are back in action. Eastleigh continue their winless run against Braintree. And the Winchester Jags face a tough clash against Plymouth. The Winchester Knights hosted Solent University last week for their first home game of the season. James Baker was there to check out how they got on. The Winchester Knights faced off against Solent University, hoping to bounce back at home a few weeks after a short-handed blowout loss on the road to Bournemouth. The Knights won the tip and had a favourable whistle early on. Winchester brought physicality and their hustle earned the easy points early on. Pam Matthews had a big night with 27 points. Solent's foul habits came back to bite them as Winchester got to the free throw line to build the lead by the end of the first quarter. Solent tried to find their way back into the game with three point shooting, but found it really difficult to find their rhythm. The Knights found success in transition and their double big pairing of Asher Gray and Matthews gave them favourable matchups inside. Solent's Kojo Sako began to help get his team in stride, getting to the free throw line and finding his teammates. However, Winchester stayed patient, and some impressive defence and winning plays allowed them to escape with a narrow 70 to 61 win. James Baker, Winchester News Online. Staying with basketball, there's been a bit of a debate about women's basketball getting the spotlight it deserves. Izzy Paul went to speak to the Winchester women's basketball team to get the dunk on this story. Shooting for the stars one hoop at a time, the Winchester women's basketball team are a collective of young and enthusiastic students with a passion to play basketball. The Winchester Angels train hard every single week here on campus, struggling balls and shooting hoops. why do they choose to play? I've never played basketball in my life. I just played with my brother in the back garden and I met the girls and I decided they were really lovely and that I wanted to give it a go. So I used to play when I was little so I just thought I should try it in uni as well since I really liked it. And it's something that you know takes your mind off things. And I've been interested in shooting hoops since I was really young. There's a friend that I used to play with when I was a little bit old, like 13, 14. We used to play one-on-one -on -one quite a lot and she really got me into basketball. So when I went to college, I played a basketball there. I've been doing it when I was like a kid, so I've enjoyed it ever since. I think it's really fun as well. And yeah, just like improve my skills and stuff and play some games, meet new people. Women's basketball has said to only have 15% coverage rate by the media. This is the equivalent of 91 seconds compared to the average men's 266 seconds. And though this has increased over time, it is still not getting the recognition it deserves. Like nowadays, like it's being more popular like on TVs and stuff, so I think it's starting to get out there a bit more. Izzy Paul, Winchester News Online. Eastley looked to end their poor run of form on Saturday when they hosted Braintree Town. Elliot Norton can bring us the highlights. What Eastley hoped was going to be a routine home win proved to be otherwise, as Braintree showed their intent from the opening minutes. Eastley were faced with another free kick a few minutes later, and after a good block, they managed to clear their lines. Despite this control, it was Easley who took the lead. Some individual brilliance from Tyree Shade fired the Spitfires in front. 
safe to say the celebration matched the goal. 12 minutes later and Braintree had the chance to get level. The shot however was sent wide of the post. Easley had the chance to double their lead before the break but with the 9 through some good goalkeeping. Into the second half and Braintree got level, grabbing an equaliser following a leaping header from Tom Blackwell. Easley fans thought they were back in front as a header at the back post found the side netting. Braintree fans wanted a penalty for this challenge. The referee wasn't fooled by the theatrics and booked a forward for simulation. But with less than 10 minutes left, an own goal from EC's Paul McCullen won the game for Braintree. The game finished, Eastley 1, Braintree 2. I thought we had a really strong first half, finished the, the first half really strong and couldn't repeat that in the second half for whatever reason. Eastley will likely view today's result as a missed opportunity. With teams around them in the league also dropping points, today would have served as a perfect chance for them to gain ground in the league table. However, a defeat at home to Braintree means they stay in a lowly 11th place. Elliot Norton, Winchester News Online. The University of Winchester men's first team was in action last week as they took on Bath University men's third team in the Western Conference Cup. Joel Marriott was at the game. In cup football, it is always good to start the game well, and Bath University did just that, as this tame effort from the edge of the box managed to somehow find the back of the net. After a quick start from Bath, there wasn't much to shout about for the rest of the game for either side, right up until the last minute when Winchester, who were in search of an equaliser, relied on Ben Bradford to step up and take us to extra time. With the teams locked at one all, it was either going to take something special or a stroke of luck, and striker Sam Hunt was the luckiest man on the pitch, being in the right place at the right time to give Winchester a 2-1 lead. Hunt once again cashed in on his luck, yet again he was in the right place at the right time, and with what looked like a carbon copy of the first goal, gave Winchester a 3-1 lead with the second half of extra time still to play. Winchester controlled the last 15 minutes of the game with the fourth and final goal coming from a genius play as Bradford spotted Cliff all on his own in the box who scored this stunner and wrapped the game up and put Winchester through to the next round of the cup. Yeah, it was really good. First emphatic win at home, 4-1. Good to score a few goals. Uh, first half was a little bit ropey in, in bits, but we worked on it, made a few changes at half-time and then built on it and that's 4-1. So big win, first win and always good to do it at home. Winchester City Flyers were back in action this weekend facing Overton Youth in the North Hampshire Cup. It turned out to be quite the goal fest and Guy Nicklinson was there to take it all in. The Flyers were two goals up after just three minutes played, and that set the tone for a demolition cup tie. Six nil up after 20 minutes, and nine nil before the half hour mark. Fourteen nil to the Flyers was the score at half time. This sloppy back pass surprised the fans as Overton got themselves a goal back in the 49th minute. There were six goals each from Eliza Eaton and April Hill, four from Amy Smith, a hat-trick from Laura De Silva, Kaylee Tonks and Libby Wilkinson scored two goals each, Jessica Harmer, Emily McDonough, Charlotte Warhurst and Shana Capel Watson also got themselves on the score sheet. 
28-1 was the final score. Overton gave their all throughout the match and assistant coach Gabriel Heidler was keen to praise their spirit. And yeah, I want to just say a massive thanks to Overton for coming. Um, kept going, kept battling, uh, got a deserved goal as well. Uh, and we wish them all the best of luck with their season too. So the Flyers get back to winning ways here at the Charters Community Stadium. They'll look to do it all again next week at home in the league against Wickham Wanderers. Guy Nicklinson, Winchester News Online. Women's Jaguars tennis group pounced into their match against Plymouth on Wednesday. Charlotte Pashley was there for us. Winchester Jaguars tennis team played against Plymouth on Wednesday and lost at their home location at the Racket and Fitness Centre. But for many players, this was their first ever game, so nerves were very high. The team are inclusive to all levels of tennis skills and provide training, social and professional opportunities. The men's captain of the tennis group was at the match today to show his support. Yeah, um, it was a tough match for the girls team today. Um, obviously Plymouth are top of the league, so they were expecting a really tough match. I think the games themselves were close and um, yeah, the scoreline is one of those where the scoreline doesn't really reflect how close the games were. I'm sure the number of uh, women joining the society as a whole has increased from last year, which is obviously really good. I spoke to women's tennis chair, Jessica Harrison, who said, Wednesday was a very tough match for all of us. With Plymouth currently being top of the league and turning out some very good players for us to compete against, we had a high standard to try and match. I am super proud of my whole team. We go against Southampton second for a rematch at home in two weeks and I am looking hopeful for a competitive match from team. Whilst the team did lose in their doubles, the women's team really gave it their all again. That's all from us. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.